by the end of the video, I'll have given you five ways you can speed up your workflow, save hours, and eliminate all this last minute stress. I think it goes without saying that shortcuts are called shortcuts for a reason, and learning them will speed you up massively. Now, without going through all of them, here's my most used ones that save me a ton of time. Alt and right square bracket will trim the layer's out point to your current time. Alt and left square bracket will trim your layer in point to the timeline cursor. Alt and left or right arrow key will move your selected keyframes one frame to the left or the right. Alt, shift and left or right arrow key will move them 10 keyframes at a time. Alt and page up or down will move your selected layers one frame at a time. And Alt, shift and page up or down will move the layer 10 frames at a time. Control, Alt and home will center a layer's anchor point. Control, home will then center the layer to the comp. U will bring up all of your layer's keyframes or you can tap P to bring up the layer's position. S for scale, R for rotation, and T for opacity. If you want to learn even more, you can go to Edit and Keyboard Shortcuts, and this will show you everything that After Effects has a shortcut for. Now, perfecting your workspace is something I think is often overlooked, particularly when you're starting out as a beginner. Rather than searching through your Windows tabs and trying to find the plugin you're looking for, I'd highly recommend you dock your most used ones. I mainly have Ease Copy and some form of easing editor to the right hand side of my composition window. This means I can get some basic easing going within a project without having to fully go into the curves graph and spend time manipulating them just for a first draft. Now with Ease Copy, if things are animating together and I want them to look smooth and in sync with each other, it means I can just copy my easing across and paste that to the other keyframes as well. I do also like to have my character text window and my align panel up as well for easier editing. Now, when I was starting out, I was a little scared of pre-comps and I never really knew when to use them and when not to. You'd hear different things from different people. That is unless, of course, you're following a video co-pilot tutorial in which you pre-comp everything. Now, I think pre-comps are very situational and it really depends on what you might be using them for. And the more you learn and the more you progress, I think you'll understand the use case for them. However, for speed, I would always recommend that you pre-comp anything that might be a reusable asset. Now, say you've got some background objects animating and you kind of want to make a pattern out of this, or it might be something that's reused in a comp. Now, rather than having to have 10 or 20 layers that you manually need to animate, and then when the client comes back and says, oh, actually, I, can you change the speed of that? And then having to redo it all, you could just pre-comp a few of those layers and reuse those assets. You can then change these slightly and manipulate the pre-comps properties just to give a different look to them all so they don't look exactly the same. Or it might be that you're making some lower thirds for a video and rather than having to animate each one and then change the text, you could just pre-comp the base animation and then change the text in there and just reuse that. Now, of course, that is just a simple example of pre-comps, but you might use them to group other objects. You might split your composition into shots and then put everything in a main composition to edit it together. There is plenty of uses for them and I'm sure you'll get to grips with them quite quickly. Now, as Ben Marriott says, we always label our layers. But let's go a step further and start labeling our projects too. I think it's definitely important to have some kind of file management system or organization within all of your projects. I've been sent over projects before and it's taken me at least an hour or two just to figure out what's going on, where everything's located. Now, how a project is organized will usually vary from studio to studio as well, but they'll all kind of follow a general kind of pattern and you'll soon get to grips with it. Now, there's already quite a lot on this on YouTube, but if you want a basic template to help get you started, I'll leave mine in the description below for you to download for free. Now, this sounds really simple, but if you take distractions away from you, you'll be surprised how much more work you actually get done without really realizing it. If you sit with your phone on your desk, you might be tempted to just open it up and see what that notification was or have a quick scroll on Instagram. But it's important to realize that each of these things is just creating a distraction that might be taking you out of that creative workflow you rarely find yourself in. If possible, link to a smartwatch or even try to do not disturb mode, only allowing calls or messages from important people and leave the social media notifications to the side. I'd love to hear any recommendations you might have on how you can speed up your workflow for myself and if you want to pick up some new skills in the spare time you have you can watch this video here.